everybody, Nigel here again with you, and uh, I guess we could call this part three of the terra firma axle truss fitting. And now you can see in the background here, here I've got the front axle up on the jig. Uh, I was going to start welding up the rear axle, but then I thought, well, I may as well get everything fitted, and then I can paint everything, and then do a weld. It saves me getting all the the painting gear out twice. So, um, without further ado, let's go over to the axle, and I'll show you how this is fitting. It does look actually to be a little bit better. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so as we can see, that's the um, upper section fitted onto the axle there. And you can see down here, once again, I've got the plasma cutter out. And I called this before, I called this an A30C. It's not, it's a plasma 30C. The A is um, the end of plasma. Yeah, sorry about that. Stick idiot. Right, so um, basically, uh, this is the top piece that's going on. And you can see, same as before, I've marked a line here where I'm going to cut. I'll probably cut a bit short this line, actually, um, so that I get a weld parallel to the, to the diff pan weld. Up here, again, we've got all this, if I could just show you, all this sideways movement here, which means you have a massive gap to weld under here. So we'll get rid of that by bringing it down. So I'm going to cut this section out here. That brings it down. Um, and then when we go around the other side, it's basically time of the same old story. Um, you can see here, there's no way that's going to fit on there and, uh, and not interfere with the diff. So I need to take that away there. So I can weld in there and then also when we look at the side we can see it's just not parallel. Um, if you look at Trainer Fitters Toolbox he's done a video of this and he's fitted them. Um, he's gone a completely different way about it to me uh, so go and watch his method and see what you think. I also need to look about doing this um, breather because on the Puma the breather hole is about here and obviously the hole in the truss is here. So do I move the breather hole up or do I make another hole in the truss? Um, I'm kind of tempted to move the breather up rather than allow even more muck and crap to get in there because uh, as Gwyn Lewis calls these, they're nice mud collectors. <laughs> so, so well, that's just a lot of people call them. It's like I said at the beginning, do I need them? Probably not. Do I not want them? Yes. Do I like the look of them? Yes. And two out of three ain't bad, so that's why they're having them. And as if by magic, there we go, it's fitted. You can see scallops out this end, as a set of wood. Um, put a radius in here. So that can weld in there nicely. You've got quite a gap under there, but I think if we just sort of stitch weld that, it'd be absolutely fine. I may even run a weld down here first before I put this on, and then I'll have a bit of a backing in there. Um, fit across the top is quite nice. More about the uh, vent later. And then on here, as you can see here, I've ground. I just need to um, take a bit more off of the bottom here to get that parallel, just because I'm fussy. And now we look down inside, we can see we've got a tiny gap all around the edge here, but it's nothing much. Um, it always looks a lot worse when you've got the light coming through, but that, that gap is probably about two mil. That's fine, get a good bit of penetration with the welding doing it that way. So, um, and I've also got to think about the breather. Now the, the breather tube is here, the original one. I've marked a line, as you can see there it is there. Now I've marked the position. So if we put this on like this, the center of this is there as you can see that's on it starts to angle up so i've come over to a bit where it's straight so i'll drill and tap that i think and put one in there i'll think about how i'm going to get the pipe from here out here and what i'm thinking is i might actually um, turn up a tube and actually fit the tube inside here so that it's got a six mil or a six and a half mil bore so i can run the the, the vent pipe through that and out i can't think of any other way of doing it so um I could have it coming out this way up through this hole over the top of the axle like this side but then you know this is going to be susceptible to getting trapped and everything so i'd rather just have a little bit a little bit exposed there in fact i could have the pipe extended out to sort of where my finger is so we shall see i'll get around to that but i'm going to look at the bottom first so i can put the plasma cutter away just one thing before i forget um i had to spread this one here and you can see i marked it there where i had to spread it all i do is i've got this piece of steel here which is slightly larger and the um and the truss and just put it in the press and force that down in and then hammer it out if you do do this at home be really careful kids because when that comes out it shoots out with quite some force because this obviously doesn't want to open up it wants to be a big spring so uh, that's all we do is just force that down in there and then bang it out there we go guys nice and parallel now and uh on the other side we've got a nice even gap on the um on the diff as well so weld in there so lovely it'll all come out nice 
and the drain hole there has got to be left clear. Remember this is the bottom so that's the lowest point. So this end I want to make sure it's welded all the way around and sealed up because there's no point in giving it an access, access point to get in. Um, so basically um, we've got this corner piece here which is cut out and if you remember I removed the anti-roll bar mounts on mine and that cut out is basically to go around them. So I've taken a piece of the, the steel that's cut from here and I'm just going to stick that in there and I'm going to weld that onto there before it's fitted to the axle and then clean it all up and make it look the same as this side so it's all um, pretty. Yes, I'm a tart. And there we go guys, that's all fitted up now. That's the uh, that's upside down as you're looking at it now. So we're quite happy with that's gone. Uh, we get a nice parallel weld here, a nice parallel weld there, down the bottom. And then the end here where that cutaway was for the anti bar mount, I've sorted that so it's all symmetrical now. Yes, I'm just a big girl's blaze. Am I allowed to say that? I'll just say I'm a tart instead in case I offend someone. So there we go, we've got the, uh, the lines all parallel. And then the, the welds ready to go around the, uh, the diff flange there. So that's going to be it for now. Um, I need to weld up the, uh, the hole where the, um, where the uh, breather goes and um, get that other one drawn and tapped and then I'll be back. And so just to finish off you can see I've done some work inside the box here. So I've, got this, I've turned up this tube which has got a six and a half mil bore in it so we can um, put some grease in there whatever put the tube in and then uh, that'll be our breather tube sorted. And also down in here you can see I've drawn and tapped a hole. So take this tube out. So the tube there and then you can see here welded that one up that was the hole that was uh, the, the original breather hole got this one up here um drawn and tapped so that's going to accept the uh, the Gwyn lewis brass elbow so hopefully that's not too close to the diff and it's going to cause any splash problems but um if it does i can always make up a, a little something on the end to stop it splashing in but um there we go and then you can see on the end here on the inside of there I had to, um, I got a milling cutter in on an angle, milled it out and then ground it away so that the tube would go in there. So um, we've now got protected tubes pretty much both ends now so uh, that's a good thing. So uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you all soon with part four I guess it'll be and we'll go from there. Bye for now.